Hey everybody, and welcome to another Learning Statistics with Jamovi tutorial. Today, we are going to continue our descriptives kick. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about continuous descriptive statistics. So we can talk about measures of central tendency and measures of variance. Before we jump into some data, I am using the most recent version of Jamovi, version 2.2.5. Okay, so let's open some data. I want to go ahead and grab a data library data library file. We are going to use the learning statistics uh, with Jamovi data folder for this. And I want to go ahead and use the AFL margins, the Australian Football League winning margins. Um, there's also the AFL finalists, Australian Football League finalist teams. Now, if you're not familiar with Australian League, uh, Australian Football League, or just Australian football in general, I do recommend it. It is a great sport. So let's open up AFL margins. Margins of victory. Here we go. Here are margins of victory for, as we scroll, 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 for 176 games. So this is a scale variable. This number represents margins of victory. So how many points the victor has minus the points the loser has, and we get the margin. And so you can see here that sometimes these point values are massive. 104 margin of 100 point, 104 point margin of victory is ridiculous. In any case, this is the statistic that and the variable that I want to use to explore central tendency and variance descriptive statistics. Okay, so how we do that is we go into exploration under the analyses tab. Exploration, we're going to click on that and we're going to go to descriptives. Descriptives takes you, is the one-stop shop for all descriptive statistics, whether you have categorical variables or you have continuous variables. And the point here is that you could do both at the same time if you really wanted to. So the only variable we have are the margin scores. So we're going to put that in variables. That'll get us to where we need to go. Uh, and now we can either do variables down as rows, okay, or excuse me, the statistics down as rows and variables as columns, or we can have the variables across rows and have the statistics across columns. I prefer it this way, and it wasn't until recently that Jamovi added this, uh, this drop-down menu here for uh, the choice. I prefer it this way mainly because it's easier to detect the statistics themselves as we go across because there's all of this space in the table. I love it. It's makes it far easier. And then you have, if you have more than one variable here, you can, you can just kind of go down your row. So I appreciate that. Now, by default, you get your N and your missing values. I have 176 total cases. That's, that also uh, translates to rows. And none of them have missing values. Okay. Additional default items are mean and median. We're going to go ahead and get the mode in here as well. So these are the three main measures of central tendency. But what is the most typical value of this data set? So looking at 176, we'll talk about those first before we talk about the other uh, default categories, default statistics, which are part of dispersion or variance. Okay, so here we have mean. So the, in this data set, the average spread or margin between the, the amount of points the winner has and the amount of points the loser has at the end of the game is about 35.3. So a fairly significant winning margin, I would say. The median isn't too far off either at 30.5. So that is the middle number. That's the 50% value. The mean is the average value. So that's all 176 margins added up divided by 176. That gives us the 35.3. The 50% value, the value in the middle, and I'll show you on, on a graph here in just a minute. 30.5 is the middle value. So 50% of the margins are above this number and 50% of the margins are below this number. The mode is the most frequently occurring value in the data set. So of all the 176 margins that are in this data set, three. So winning by three points is the most common, the most frequent way to win a game. And this really makes sense for how scoring works in AFL. Many points are either uh, uh, achieved by six or by ones. And so you can imagine that this was three scores of one point, and then that's the win. Okay, we can also get sums if we want to. There's not a lot of information that you can get from sum, but we can check it as well, and that'll go at the end of mode. So at least it, it puts all of my values of central tendency in the, you know, the, the same area here. So the sum of all values so that of, of these 176 games, the winning margins is equal to about 6,213. That's how many points represents here. So let's talk about dispersion now. So that was central tendency. What is the most typical value? Dispersion is the next kind of way that we describe our data. And by default, standard deviation, minimum and maximum are checked. Now we can also grab the variance, the range, and the interquartile range, which is the quartiles from 25% to 75%. So that gives you the amount of information that's nearest to the median. So let's talk about each of these in um, the data here. So standard deviation is the average distance, a single measurement, that is a margin, is away from the mean. So the average distance, any one margin is away from the mean is about 26.1 points. 
Okay. So the mean here is 35. So randomly pick one of the 176 values here, and it'll be about 26.1 away from the mean. And we can represent that visually on a plot, a histogram, which we'll sh I'll show you towards the end of this video. Now, the fun fact here is that you have to calculate variance before you can even calculate the standard deviation. So the variance is the uh, deviation from the mean squared. So it's the amount of spread that uh, this data set has. Okay, so it's the squared deviation from the mean. And the reason why we square it is because if we included positive values and negative values, variance would be zero because we would subtract the same amount that we are adding to the mean and that would end up being zero. So we square it. So we end up with the total amount of spread of dispersion away from that mean. So that's 680 square points because it's in square values, 680 square points. So our spread is a lot of points. And you can see this when we see that one game had a uh, margin, a winning margin of only one point. They won by one point. And yes, you can tie in AFL. Or there was that massive 107 point blowout. So that's why our variance here is fairly sizable. The interquartile range is 37. 0.8, so that means um, the 25% mark to the 75% mark includes 30, almost 38 points, okay, around our median of 30.5, 30 okay, so you divide this by 2 to get to the 25 or the 75 point mark, okay, so you divide this by 2, subtract it from 30.5, that's your 25 percentile, and then if you divide this by 2 and um, add it to 30.5, that'll be your 75, 75th percentile, excuse me. The full range of our data, so we take the highest and we subtract the lowest, and we add 1, is 116. So that's the range. So we go from 1 to 115. Highest value, blowout margin, whatever you want to call it. 115 points. That's an insane winning margin, but that's our range. Our minimum was 0. Okay, so that's a tie, actually. And our maximum is 116. So you can see here that 116 minus 0 gives you 116. I, I apologize. Uh, I misspoke. The range here is just high minus low, not the uh, inclusive range. That's when you add 1. Apologies. So if you were to add one, the range would actually be uh, 117 because 116 minus zero plus one is 117. That would be inclusive of my maximum or inclusive of my minimum. So There's one additional point. That's all right. That's all right. Um, we can have uh, so uh, an additional statistic that we can grab, here, uh, two additional statistics that we can grab here for the mean to see how well this particular 176 games matches other samples of AFL games. AFL has been around for a long time. So. Just in case we wanted to pick a new set of 176 games, we would want to get the standard error of the mean, which gets put next to the mean on this chart. Um, and we can also get the 95 or whatever confidence interval you want, um, which gives us the upper and lower bounds for that 95% confidence interval. So we have a fairly low standard error, which means that the mean of 35.3 of isn't, isn't that bad um, as far as uh, a typical margin of victory. And our 95% confidence intervals shows us that 95% uh, confident that our mean is somewhere between 31.4 points winning margin and 39.2 points winning margin, which is pretty amazing. And it helps that we have 176 data points here. A couple of other statistics that we can get for descriptives that can help us with continuous variables include skewness and kurtosis. I'm not going to go too into them in this video, but I will in another video. Finally, we can get a normality Shapiro-Wilk test, but again, that's a little high level for this video. Let's finish up this video with a couple of plots that might help us. First, let's grab the histogram. This histogram is going to show us the density of various winning margins. So here we have down at the end, we have um, the, our, you know, our couple or two, uh, two or three high value ones. And then as we go from zero, which is inclusive of here, zero, one, you know, we work our way through 40, 80, et cetera. This cannot be edited unfortunately. So you're stuck with this kind of binning. Again, if you have your own data set, you can, uh, and this data set can, you know, you can save it as a CSV. If you use this actual data set, if AFL small margins, it is a CSV on your computer. You can open that up in Excel and do your own binning if you want to create your own, uh, your, your own um, widths of the bars here, because that's something that you would do on a frequency table. And you can do that here with this. But of course, here we're stuck with what Jamovi thinks is best to show you the density of the data. And you can see where, um, where our means and our medians live here is right, right here. Okay? We can also add the density curve. So this is going to be the normal curve that would show all the values that exist underneath, all the, the um, theoretical and actual values that would exist underneath, underneath this curve. And you can see that it's got this shape here. So that's a way to show the data uh, from your smallest values to your largest values. And this kind of gives you an indication as to where your mean is, right? Where the, the vast majority of the values are. It also kind of gives you an idea of where your median and mode are. 
Although this graph isn't fine-tuned enough to show you three being the mode. But it also gives you a sense of the standard deviation and variance because we have a big spread from zero, you know, up to 120. I know the maximum is 116, but up to 120 as the tail kind of goes out. You know, we can also show this data with a box plot. Okay, it's going to give us our box and whiskers. Okay, these are these are when you were in second or third grade. These were called, you know, box, box and whisker plots. These are the whiskers here. A couple of a uh, couple of outliers that are expressed as dots at the end there because the vast majority of our inter interquartile range. Remember, it is 37, almost 38. And that represents this edge of the box here and this edge of the box here. We can also violin to show where the information is. And of course, this broad violin down here at the bottom, this broad violin represents this. Oops excuse me, represents this part of the curve. We can add in those data points, although it's going to look a little bit messy. Um, you can do jit jittered or staggered. Jittered puts it off uh, the central axis here to show you that if there are multiple entries that they're not going to be overlapping with each other too much. So it kind of gets, um, when there's a lot of overlap, they get darker. You can also do stacked, which does it like this. Okay? It gives you all of the data in a row. I do prefer jittered just a little bit more um, because it, it kind of looks fun. And then we can also throw in the mean here, which is represented by a big square. Okay, and that shows you where the mean is versus where the median is, which is this dark line. Now, if I change it back to stacked, let's see if I can get, nope, even still, our three, our mode isn't represented on this graph, and we cannot edit it, unfortunately. So those are the two ways that you can represent continuous data on, on plots here. And that's how you get the descriptive statistics for continuous data in Jamovi. If you have any suggestions, comments, or feedback, please leave that down below. Thank you for watching. See you next time.